Hello, this is Carlos from the Hydro Project. I created this video for those of you who don't have experience with Redis, or perhaps have used it but have never actually installed it. I won't deep dive into Redis, there are plenty of books and online resources which can help you master Redis. Instead, I'll only focus on how to get you access to a Redis server. Because Redis is a core dependency of Hydra, and I'd like to share only enough about Redis to get you started with Hydra. So what is Redis, you ask? Redis is an in-memory database, which is often used as a caching and messaging server. In truth, Redis is so much more than that, making it really popular, and easily one of the most utilized pieces of infrastructure powering the web. There are lots of ways to get access to an instance of Redis. In this section, we'll look at several methods. We recommend that you work your way through this entire video before deciding which method is best for you. We'll begin by looking at how easy it can be to use a hosted Redis service. Then we'll look at how to install Redis on machines running Mac, Windows, and Linux. Then I'll show you an increasingly popular approach involving a technology called Docker. Perhaps the easiest way to obtain access to a Redis server is simply to use a hosted service. This is an attractive option because it doesn't require a server installation. Instead, you simply point your application to a hosted instance just as you might when providing an application with a database connection string. I'm going to use Redis Labs, a popular Redis service provider. But there are plenty of others to choose from, so make sure you look around if you'd like to try this approach. Once on the Redis Labs site, we'll select the Redis Cloud Service. We'll select the 30 megabyte free tier, which is just fine for our evaluation purposes. Next, I'll fill out the quick registration with an email address where I'll receive a confirmation link. Checking my email, I see the Redis Labs welcome message with a click here link. That takes me to the Redis landing page where I'll click on the message tab and then on the new Redis subscription button. Here I have an opportunity to upgrade to a better plan but I'll stick with a 30 megabyte free plan for now. Next, I need to name my Redis instance. I'll name it Hydra and press on the activation button. After a few seconds, the instance becomes active and I can select it to view important details. If you try this, the thing you need to save is the endpoint address and port. You'll need that when later connecting to your instance. If you're using a Mac, you can install the excellent Homebrew app, which then lets you install Redis and many other applications. Before becoming a Docker convert, I used Homebrew a lot. We'll have a look at Docker later in this video. Let's jump over to the Homebrew website at brew.sh. To install Homebrew, we just need to copy the install command, which is really a Ruby script, and paste it into the Mac terminal. The install starts and then prompts us for our machine password for installation credentials. A few moments later, the brew install completes and we're now able to install Redis. To install Redis, I simply type brew install Redis. That's it, I now have Redis installed, but it isn't actually running. We have two options to get it started. For now, I'll just use the services start command. So brew services start Redis will start Redis for us. Now Redis is running in the background. We can test this using the Redis CLI command line client. The ping command is used to test connectivity between a client and a Redis server. Great, looks like everything is working. We can exit Redis CLI using the quick command. And lastly, brew services stop Redis shuts down Redis when we're done with it. Easy, right? Now let's look at installing Redis on Windows. This process is a bit different because the creators of Redis don't officially support Windows. Fortunately, Microsoft Open Tech provides excellent support. Let's access the download link via the Redis.io website. There, we'll just click on the download page link. As we scroll down the page, we see the Windows section with the Learn More link. 
This takes us to the MS Open Tech Redis repo on GitHub. No worries, we're not going to have to install Redis from source. We'll just click on the releases link to download a pre-built Windows MSI file. Since I don't actually own a PC, you'll have to take it from there. I've added this section on installing Redis on Linux. But chances are that if this is your only option, then you probably already know how to do this and can skip this section. However, if you're interested in how to build Redis from source, then you've come to the right place. For this demonstration, I'll use an Ubuntu server on Amazon's AWS cloud service. We'll begin by ensuring that the machine is up to date using sudo apt-get update. Next, we'll ensure that the build essential tools are installed using sudo apt-get install build essentials. We're good here, so this completes quickly. Let's return to the Redis IO homepage and right click on the link for the latest stable version. We'll copy the link address and use it in our terminal session. The wget program allows me to download Redis from the link I just copied. With Redis downloaded, we need to untar it and cd into the folder it created. Now we just type make to build Redis. This process can take a while, so I'll speed up the video. Now I need to configure Redis so it's accessible from the outside world. We do this in the Redis config file. We need to change the bind address. By default, Redis binds to localhost. We'll specify 0.0.0, .0, which allows it to bind to all available network interfaces. Also by default, Redis is configured to operate in protected mode. Let's change that to unprotected mode by changing the yes param to no. It's normally risky to do this, as Redis is not currently configured with a password, and here we're opening it up to the outside world. However, I'm using AWS in this example, and access to this server will be restricted to only my IP address. We can run Redis by CDing into the source folder and typing dot forward slash redis dash server with dot dot forward slash redis dot config as a parameter, so it picks up our updated Redis config changes. Since we're using a cloud server on AWS, we need to make some changes to remotely access the Redis instance we just created. In the machine security group settings, we need to add a rule to allow Redis to be accessible on its default port of 6379. Again, we'll specify my IP address as the only one that can access this Redis instance. We then return to the EC2 machine's description to grab the public IP address of my cloud server. Returning to a terminal prompt, I can use Redis CLI with a dash H host flag to specify the remote address of the Redis instance. An increasingly popular approach for using Redis and other services is to use them via Docker. Docker is a containerization technology which looks a lot like a virtual machine, but is actually a lightweight alternative with a lot of additional benefits. Using Docker, we're able to download and start a Redis container on our Mac, PCs, or Linux machines. This is really amazing technology which has taken the tech world by storm. If you haven't used Docker before, no worries, we're about to take that plunge. Let's jump over to the Docker.io or Docker.com website. We click on the Get Started with Docker button and scroll down to the Docker for Mac or the Docker for Windows section. We'll click to download the Mac client. Once that downloads, we'll do the Mac drag and drop install thing. Now we can use the Mac Spotlight to search for Docker so we can run it. We get a handy Docker icon which we can use to monitor status and other options. Once Docker is running, we can drop back to the terminal and issue a command to download the latest Redis container. Once that completes, I'm able to use a Docker command to run the container. 
Here I specify that I want to expose the Redis port from within the container and map it to the outside of the container. The docker ps command allows us to see which containers are running. We can use the docker stop redis command to shut down our redis container. There are lots of resources on the web which will introduce you to redis and the many things it can do. In this section, we'll look at two important resources to get you started. The first resource is the Redis IO site itself. There you'll see all the commands that Redis understands. As you can see, it's quite a long list. An easy way to view the commands is by their grouping. We can then drill down to an individual command to learn more about it and view example usage. The documentation tab lists articles on specific Redis topics. In earlier video segments, we saw the Redis CLI command line client. We can use it to issue any of the Redis commands we saw in the documentation. An important point here is that this isn't the only way to interact with Redis. We can use a Redis library in our Node app to communicate with Redis. In that case, we'd issue Redis calls, which in turn issue Redis commands. For now, we'll just stick with the Redis client. We can issue the keys command to view data we might have stored in Redis. We don't see any data here because we haven't actually added any. Let's add a key using the set command. The get command allows us to retrieve the key we just added. Let's set another key called email. Now when we issue the keys command, we get back the keys we added. We can delete a key using the del command. We can exit the Redis client using the quit or exit command. If we restart the client and issue a keys command, we see that there's still an email key stored, which we can retrieve using the get command. This highlights an important point about Redis. It stores data which can be examined and retrieved using various remote clients. Oh, and lastly, the Redis client also has a built-in help command. Another Redis resource I'd like to show you is the Redis tutorial site at try.redis.io. We can start a tutorial by entering the word tutorial in the prompt at the bottom of the page. This tutorial allows us to try Redis without installing it or using the Redis command line client. To move through the tutorial, just click on the next link or type next to continue. In this video, we saw how to use a Redis hosted service. We also saw how to install Redis on Mac, PCs, and Linux machines. As you can see, Redis runs in lots of places. In my own tinkering, I run Redis on a tiny $40 Raspberry Pi single board computer. We also saw how to set up Docker to download a ready-made Redis container. That was a really nice option because our machines stay clean as we add and remove containers. We learned that Redis is a server which accepts commands to interact with data. We also saw that we can learn more on the Redis IO site as well as the Redis tutorial site. We hope this video was a helpful introduction and showed you several ways to get started with Redis. Thanks for watching.